I'm going to try to beat Pikmin 1 without killing a single enemy. That means no bosses, no ball borbs, I can't even kill a sheer grub. So that means sneaking parts past enemies, breaking down walls while under fire, and a lot of dead Pikmin. And oh yeah, since we can't kill enemies, we can't use their bodies to make more Pikmin, making this challenge even harder. So join me now as I find out if you can beat Pikmin 1 without killing a single enemy. So right off the bat, we're going to be skipping day 1 because there isn't a single enemy. So it really isn't any different than a regular run. On to day 2. So the first thing I do on day 2 is start to gather up some pellets. Pellets are going to be incredibly important in this run. Since we can't kill anything, they're going to be our only way of sprouting new Pikmin. And as I'm gathering up some pellets, we get a taste of what this run is going to be all about. Since I can't kill any enemies, our only choice is to sneak stuff by them, which I do a poor job of here. And since our only option is to sneak stuff by enemies, flower pikmin are super important because of their increased movement speed. The faster they sneak by enemies, the less pikmin will lose doing it. So I go flower up and then grab the fuel dynamo easily getting it past these two dwarf ball borbs. I then find the yellow Pikmin, break down this wall, and grab the whimsical radar. And the Pikmin decide to bring it as close to the ball borbs as they possibly can. I swear they do this shit on purpose. Thankfully, since they're all flowers, they're gone before the ball borb even waits up. I then try and break down this wall, guarding the extraordinary bolt. Which proved to be a bit scary, because these sheer grubs are right by the wall, and I don't want them caught in the bomb blast. But thankfully, I could just wait until they went back underground, and they weren't affected. On day 3, I come back and finish the wall, making sure that no sheer grubs were harmed in the process, and bring back the extraordinary bolt to base, making sure to distract the ball borb so my Pikmin can sneak by unharmed. I then find the Nova Blaster, and my Pikmin try their hardest to shove it right up this ball borb's ass. Somehow, we only end up losing 7 Pikmin. And I once again distract this ball borb so my Pikmin can get by. Then I grab the Shock Absorber, and once again, my Pikmin try their hardest to get themselves all killed. But despite their best efforts, we only end up losing 3 Pikmin and make it by. On day 4, we head to the Forest Naval everyone's favorite level. And we quickly find the blue Pikmin, but since we can only use pellets to sprout more blues, we have a limited amount. In fact, we barely have enough to grab the Ionium Jet. We then find the Gravity Jumper and start bringing it back to base. And since the only enemies here are Fiery Blowhods, I feel safe letting the red Pikmin bring it back themselves. I then spent the rest of the day breaking down the many walls around Forest Naval. I should have just let them die. So day 5 is where shit gets real in this run. It's where we come across two major roadblocks. The first is the Geiger counter, and the second is this fucking bridge. Let's take a look at the Geiger counter first. To get the Geiger counter, you have to come to this small section of the Forest of Hope, move this box, and fight and kill this Snagret. That's right, I said kill. You have to kill the Snagret to get the Geiger counter. You have no other choice. And unfortunately, the Geiger counter is one of the 25 mandatory parts you need to beat the game. So, we're gonna have to kill that bird. And that's when this run changed from can you beat the game without killing any enemies to what is the minimum amount of enemies you have to kill to beat the game. So we kill the Snagret, raising our kill counter for this run up to one. And bringing the Geiger counter back to base is kind of a mess because we still have the two other Snagrits and an army of ball borbs to avoid. And somehow we get through everything without a single casualty. And now it's time to talk about this fucking bridge. A bridge that seems so simple and easy, but ended up taking me hours to complete. You see, the bridge itself isn't the problem, it's these fucking sheer grubs. These things guard this bridge with their life. And they die so quickly, a single Pikmin can kill one in a matter of seconds. So completing this bridge without killing one is almost impossible. I could get my Pikmin attacking the bridge without killing one, 
But the problem was, as soon as they finished the bridge, they would instantly attack whatever shear grub was next to them. And I could not get these fucking things away from the Pikmin. I tried distracting them as Olimar, but it only works for the male shear grubs. Since the female ones aren't aggressive, they won't follow you. All they care about is destroying the bridge. Even if they are away from the bridge, as soon as it moves once, they all come swarming it like alarm bells just went off. So every time I would finish the bridge, there would just be three female shear grubs standing around waiting to die. And since I couldn't move them, my only option was to call my Pikmin back as soon as possible so they wouldn't kill them. And this was so difficult. I had to time it perfectly because as soon as they were done, they would attack the shear grubs. And like I said, they would die extremely quickly. And no matter how many times I tried or how perfectly I timed it, one would always manage to die. I tried this over and over and over and over again. And one always managed to die. Just for the fuck of it, I tried whistling them from the other side of the bridge thinking it wouldn't make any difference. But it did. I whistled them back and not one shear grub died. It was a fucking miracle. But then I realized they wanted to destroy the bridge I just built, and I had no way of stopping them. So I had to get the Sagittarius as quickly as I could and get over that bridge. And with seconds to spare, it looked like I had made it. Nothing could stop me now. I did end up getting the part though. So on day 6, we go back to the Forest of Hope and grab the last part, the Radiation Canopy. Which is guarded by the Armored Cannon Beetle, and I'm gonna be honest, I thought this part was gonna be a complete nightmare. But it was actually completely easy. See, I told you, it went off without a hitch. We only end up losing one Pikmin and even the Bulborb sleeping outside didn't cause any trouble. With the Forest of Hope completed, I spent the rest of the day gathering as many Pikmin as I could. An easy day. And after the nightmare that was day 5, it was nice to have one. On day 7, we go back to the impact site to pick up the only remaining part there, the Positron Generator. And we come across another roadblock, this fucking clam. The problem is, we have to kill him to get the Positron Generator. And unfortunately, it's another mandatory part, so it has to be done. I was hoping that even though it had a health bar, the game wouldn't treat it as a living thing. Kind of like how the pellet posies were. But if you look closely behind all the dead Pikmin, you can clearly see an enemy soul rising up. So unfortunately, that adds another one to our kill counter, which currently sits at 2. So we start day 8 and head right over to Beatty's domain. And the sheer grubs continue to be a fucking nightmare. That's a restart. So we head back over, this time making sure to dodge the shear grubs. And unfortunately, we come across another enemy we have to kill. Because we need the guard satellite. So our kill counter goes up to 3, and these little bastards continue to piss me off. We then turn our eye to the Omega Stabilizer, which again requires us to kill an enemy to obtain. So raise that counter up to 4. And getting the Omega Stabilizer back to base was easy, but getting my blue Pikmin out was not. This Wallywog here just completely decides to troll me. I'm trying to maneuver my Pikmin so they won't attack him, which causes them to go straight into the fire. And then this Sheer Grub comes up, and is just asking for the sweet release of death. Then some more come up, and by some miracle, I don't kill them. I then go back to save the stragglers I left behind, and the same thing happens again. Even though I only have 47 blues remaining, I just say fuck it and try to grab the anti dioxin filter. And thanks to this Wallywog, we barely make it out with enough Pikmin to carry this thing. And since I was so distracted with the Wallywog, I didn't even notice the fiery Blowhog waiting to eviscerate my Pikmin. So I have to go back to base, grab some reds, and bring the part home. On day 9, my plan is to grab the Libra and the analog computer. And it goes really well! I first grab the Libra and get the reds to bring it back to base. I then use the blues to fish the analog computer out of the water, and grab some reds so they can bring it back to base. F 
fuck. So, I do day 9 over, this time without the whole dying part. And this time it actually goes really well. I get both parts without an issue. On to day 10. On day 10, I first go and grab the repair type bolt. And since there are no enemies around it, it's fairly easy. But then, we come across another bridge. And this one doesn't have sheer grubs by it, it has sheer wigs. Which is actually a good thing, because when sheer wigs get down to half HP, they fly away. Meaning my Pikmin won't accidentally kill them when they finish the bridge. But there's another problem. They eat Pikmin way faster than the sheer grubs did. I started the bridge with 79 Pikmin, and when I'm finished, I only have 32 left. And oh yeah, they end up killing the sheer wigs anyways. Awesome. So, after a couple of tries, I actually came up with a strategy that worked really well. If I got my Pikmin on the bridge and started attacking the Shirweeds myself, they would fly away, leaving my Pikmin alone. And I just had to keep doing this until they finished the bridge, and it worked flawlessly. And then I realized, just like the Shirgrubs, the Shirweeds also like destroying bridges. So, I had to grab the massage machine as quickly as possible and try to make it back. Which thankfully, I did. And listen, I know the massage machine isn't an essential part, but daddy ain't raised no bitch. We then go and grab the interstellar radio from this guy's corpse, raising our kill counter up to 5. Then we head over to the gluon drive, and we have another fucking bridge with shearwigs. And this time, there's a wally log too. Like, just look at this fucking party up in here. I try and see if the Pikmin can finish the bridge before dying, but unfortunately the Wallywog just goes to town, forcing me to restart. I come back, and this time I tell the Wallywog that he's not fucking invited. Then I distract the Shearwade so my Pikmin can finish the bridge. And speaking of parties, this is a fucking party. Somehow we make it through and move on to day 11. Day 11, we basically go around breaking all the walls in the distant spring. And these two in particular were a pain in the ass. They are sandwiched right in between two Wallywogs, and it was incredibly difficult to keep them both distracted at the same time. Oh yeah, and this guy came in just to be a dick. After a couple restarts, I finally kept them both busy for long enough so my Pikmin could complete the wall. And with the rest of the day, I focused on completely opening up the distant spring so I can get a ton of parts on day 12. On day 12, I continued breaking down some more walls, and then this yellow Pikmin decided to do this. God, I love this game. After that travesty and a restart, I went and grabbed the UV lamp, and managed to sneak it past this ball bear. I then grabbed the Synchronium Rotor, got it past these two assholes, and somehow got it through this clusterfuck even though my Pikmin literally tried to feed the part to this ball bear. And even though I got the part back, the clusterfuck continued. I then grabbed the Pilot Seat and take it right back through the Death Gauntlet. But this time, my Pikmin don't literally try to walk in the ball bear's mouth, so it works out a bit better. I then grabbed the Bowsprit, which required me to kill this Cannon Beetle, raising our kill counter up to 6. And again, despite my Pikmin's best efforts, we managed to sneak it past 3 ball bears without much issue. And with that, we end the day, going into day 13 with only 2 mandatory parts remaining in the entire run. And on day 13, we grab one of those mandatory parts, the number 2 Ionium Jet. And then my Pikmin do something that was completely unprecedented in this run. They don't take the stupidest path possible, and actually go around an enemy. And with that, we only have one part remaining, the Kronos Reactor. We grab it, and my Pikmin do something that literally makes my jaw drop. They do it again. They expertly weave their way past every enemy without losing one Pikmin. It made me so proud. But yeah, that's our last mandatory part. We don't need to go to the final trial and defeat Emperor Ballblast because the secret stash isn't mandatory. If we just wait until day 30, we will leave the planet and beat the game, with only 6 enemies killed. So yeah, it's not possible beating Pikmin without killing any enemies, but you can do it by only killing 6.